everyone, and welcome back to Swans Cast, first episode of 2022. Been a couple of weeks since we were last on, uh, but welcome back, Lee, and I hope you had a good Christmas and New Year. Hello, yes, good to be back, finally. We've had some football. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just missed the football over Christmas, but no, I had a good Christmas. Nice to be back home, back in Swansea for a bit, which was nice. Uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, so like we had no football, but... I know, I was going to say, we haven't done a video for a couple of weeks, but at the same time, we haven't really missed anything. We've only got one game to discuss, which is the game that happened on the weekend just gone. So we'll get to that later on. But um, yeah, so yeah, been a bit delayed in terms of like not putting out a video for the last two weeks, I believe. I think we took what, like Christmas and New Year, we decided not to do one just because it was a busy week, you know, we've seen family and stuff. But then you uh, you got the lurgy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, caught COVID straight first week in January, you know, start 2022 off strong, I thought. Caught well, COVID. Um, yeah, back to normal now, though. Well, yeah, oh my God, I was rough. Hopefully you're feeling a bit better now. Yeah, nearly back to full fitness now. Um, yeah, I also, no, I didn't have COVID, but the booster jab um, took me out a little bit, to be honest. So not necessarily probably the same way you were feeling, but looking at a screen was a little bit tricky. Uh, feeling yeah. a bit dizzy so uh that seems to have sorted itself out mostly anyway so um hopefully anyone else out there that had issues with covid or sort of uh after effects of the jab are feeling better as well over the festive period it's been a bit of a bit of a weird one but at the same time at least we weren't necessarily fully locked down like last year so could enjoy it a little bit more this time and yeah, yeah. the football is back as you mentioned so I hated not having the football over Christmas, though. Like yeah. watching the Swans on Boxing Day and in between Christmas and New Year, I loved that. I was actually yeah. gutted. It wasn't on if there was a massive hole there. Definitely did miss it as well. Uh, especially when a couple of the games, obviously, it's difficult for me to watch all of them in person, especially around my work. I was meant to go to one or two of them. I couldn't in the end. They got cancelled or... Um, well, I mean, you couldn't have gone anyway if they weren't cancelled because of the restrictions. And uh, yeah, it's uh, been too long since I've been down there now again. And it was nice to see them on the TV the weekend, at least. Do you think it was a bit of a, a no, I don't want to speculate, a bit of a tactic, like delaying the games because we didn't play behind closed doors? <clears throat> um, I don't know, because the away games got delayed as well, didn't they? A couple it was... of them. There were so many cancellations. Oh, I mean, like some championship fixture lists some days were like two games. So I, I don't know how Yeah, definitely like teams had like... four or five games cancelled because I don't know. Oh, there wasn't there some controversy around like Liverpool with all them false negatives and stuff that they had. Yeah, I I yeah. I, I definitely think that I, I know like a lot a lot of teams were hit by COVID, which is fair enough. But some but I think I it. some were definitely using it as as tactics, no doubt about it. Yeah, I think I would like to think the Swans wouldn't, especially when you saw the team sheet for Southampton. Like, I think Patterson still got it or still like isolating, wasn't he? That's why he wasn't involved. Um, and I feel like we'll talk about it obviously in more detail, but maybe the fitness wasn't, especially for extra time. Um, that you could tell they hadn't played for a long time, have been necessarily in full training the entire <coughs> time they were off. But we'll get there in a second. Before we get to that, I just want to. I say new section, but we're going to start doing like little shout outs if anyone is um, asking us to do that. We are more than happy to shout out anyone that watches our content. We appreciate everyone's um, time that they put into viewing or listening to us on our podcast. So just want to shout out quickly to South Coast Jacks, um, a little Swans group that have started a little Twitter account. Uh, they're from the sort of Hampshire and Sussex area. So I'll link their Twitter page in the description on YouTube to this video, but check them out. They've uh, not long started looking to grow. Um, so we said we'd give them a shout out and help them. And thanks for listening, guys. Hopefully we can be in touch a couple of, couple of times and let us know what you think about what we're saying and how you are finding the swans at the moment. Uh, otherwise, don't forget on that note to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all of our content. We're on 418 at the moment. So we're trying to hit 500. So let's hope we can get a good early start to 2022 and get up to 500. And when we do get there, we will be doing a giveaway um so yeah keep your eyes peeled for details on that and don't forget as well to leave a like on the video because that helps more people then see our stuff helps us grow and it's kind of like a snowball then from there hopefully anyway so we can improve our content going forward um 
Okay, that's all done. So we can start talking about the game. So uh, the verdict then. We've got one game to talk about. Feels well. It's a month since we spoke about the game before. And let's recap that we lost the last three <laughs> that we yeah. did play before the, the big break. Yeah. Um, so yeah, back in action in the FA Cup Premier League game. Well, not Premier League game. Playing against the Premier League opposition, Southampton. And um, I think if you saw the score like losing 3-2 on paper before the match kicked off, probably would have been all right with that. But after what happened and the way it happened, I think there is definitely frustrations to discuss. So we'll begin to discuss those. Um, what did you make of the game overall then? Uh I don't think we played very well. I gotta say that. I don't. I I thought that having the, the long break, uh, we were going to come. We, it was a break that we needed to be fair, because as you said, we were poor before, before all the cancellations. We'd lost three in a row. We hadn't played very well. I thought that when we come back after this break, it was a cup game. It was a bit less pressure, really, and obviously not being the favourites against the Premier League team, I thought we were just going to see a bit more, just a bit more really from the team, and. I think the red card kept us in the game because before that, it was the worst sort of 20, 30 minutes when everybody got sent off. I've seen in ages. I thought it was going to be so much better. Um, and I think the red card made it a game. Um, but, but, but until that point, we were awful. And then I think the red card was a bit of a, like just a bit of a settler, evened up the game a bit then. And then we had a good cup tie then. But uh, yeah, I was, I was a bit disappointed, to be honest. Yeah, it was, um, it was disappointing, I think. I don't know if I thought we were going to play well, though. I kind of was in the camp, I think, that I was concerned that we hadn't played for a month because it's not just not playing for a month, is it? It's like you've got players that were out with COVID and you'll have players that were out isolated. And I know the training ground was closed for a week. Um, there was other things in, like when it was open, like they had to go straight home after training. And I guess that's going to affect your chemistry, your morale, like just your rhythm and routines. And it's difficult to sort of... I guess expect to come back against the Premier League opposition or guns firing with all of those things involved. Like you don't really know the impact that I had and who what, what players had it and how bad they got it. Um like you said yourself, you know, it's it's you still recover it now. So do you think you could go and run ninety minutes if I asked you to? Not now. God no. No, I will say so, that. Depends how you got it. Like I um my, like my partner who I live with didn't have yeah. any symptoms whatsoever and then me I was absolutely dying so I definitely couldn't go and run yeah. 90 minutes I couldn't couldn't run 90 minutes before mine but yeah I just meant definitely theoretically couldn't do it now. play five aside then but I'm look I'm not trying to make excuses at the same no, time no, though. I'm it. just I'm just I think putting a reality perspective on it I think yeah, no, at the I start, it, I think actually. it was other teams with COVID that were delaying our games. And then all of a sudden, we added in our camp. And I think from the amount of delays that we ended up having, it seems maybe that we were hit quite hard as a team. And... Yeah, I know. I think um, it's the it's the same for every team at the moment, though, isn't it? Like, especially yeah. with that Christmas period. I'm sure everyone's adjusting to that. Yeah, um, I just feel like we had the longest saying, period like... where we didn't play, it seems like. Yeah, I, I... no, I get what you're saying. It is, it is going to take an effect. But also added on to that, I thought that he had a choice, really, to either play the like some fringe players, which he did, he gave some players a chance, yeah. Um, or do you sort of play first-team players because we've had a break to get the fitness in? Like you said, yeah. I don't know, obviously, like, Patterson probably wasn't quite recovered. Well, I don't know the ins and outs, so we don't know yeah, exactly. so we do, other, that but, probably um... That probably picked his team for him, who was, who was fit. But I just thought as well, like, players some players possibly on last chance saloon with their you know with their opportunities in the squad just, just didn't play well again yeah but then at the same time another factor into like perhaps a disjointed performance is two things there is a few changes within the starting lineup of players that wouldn't have played together that much um or in yeah. positions which i'll discuss in a second and also, the first time under Russell Martin, we played a certain formation, we played 4 3 3. So, a couple of things to adapt to. And I think you are right when you look at the big picture. Like I said, on paper, 3 2 against Southampton, you probably think, oh, okay, fair enough. But they had a red card quite early on. And the game only kind of, I say, got even. I think we were on top after the red card, but it was kind of because they were already 1 0 up and they 
just needed to defend that, so they didn't need to do much more. I th- and you saw it in extra time, as soon as we went ahead, as soon as they wanted to start playing again, they, they could. Maybe fitness came into it at that point, but their quality obviously showed through in the end. Um, but yeah, maybe you would expect a little bit more still. It was more even. I would say we looked the better team when they had the red card, but I think it's because they were allowing us to look like that. They were allowing yeah. us to pass the ball around. And when we were allowed to pass the ball around, we didn't start to look like a good team again. Um, yeah. But as soon as we got to the back, I couldn't break them down very often until we eventually got an equaliser. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the specifics in the game then. We'll talk about the players and stuff at the end. Um, the first goal, you're saying about players standing out, take, not taking their chances. They might they might be in last chance a saloon. Now, I don't know if Liam Walsh fits into this category because he only joined in the summer, but he's not been in and around the team all that much lately. He hasn't got on the pitch for quite a few games and he got handed a start here. Um, had a good early sort of contribution. He had a shot from distance. You know, we thought maybe he's like making his way into the game. I think his responsibility was to try and spray the ball a bit around with Mac Rhymes being on the bench, perhaps. And he did try and spray the ball a bit around on one instance and passed it straight to the opposition that led to the first goal, where um, I think, though, it's not 100% on him. It's probably like 70-30 in terms of the blame game here. 70% Liam Walsh's fault. But I also have to say Brandon Cooper kind of put him in a tricky position, running out from defence, running straight into a Southampton player, where he eventually turns, uh, keeps the ball. But like... Liam Walsh doesn't have many options, but he took the wrong one. Yeah, yeah, no, you you summed up. Anyway, Walsh, it's bit of a, it still seems a bit of a strange signing to me. Like, because he's not anywhere near the squad, is he? I know he played on the weekend, but he's not anywhere near the squad. I still wonder whether he was a signing as a contingency if Grimes did go in the summer, and then obviously Grimes ended up staying sort of last minute, Um, and now he just doesn't really get much game time. But yeah, no, I, I just think. But that probably that probably plays into it as well because that it was that was that was a poor pass, wasn't it? Yeah, but then like his fitness as well was a concern. So for someone to come in with that concern and fitness as a replacement for yeah, Grimes, yeah. yeah, it's a bit like a risky one. And then as a result of him potentially being where he is in the peck in order, like perhaps he's got to be where he is. Like Felton's maybe on his way out, and could we have not signed Walsh and Felton would have had a bit more game time, and would we have really noticed much difference? I don't, I have no idea what's going on with Fulton. I I know he was on the bench and he came on, but I think they put him off. I think they brought him off the bench to cup tie him in case he goes. Yeah, we'll talk more about the subs later yeah. on. Um, but yeah, Lee Marsh, but that was uh, not not the sort of um, impact he wanted to have on a match. And when he's perhaps here making a start to try and show what he can do to try and get himself in the team a little bit more, he's probably got himself out of the team a little bit more, if anything. Yeah, that's fair. I think, mean, like, but it's across the board as well. I don't think many, any of the fringe players put their hand up yeah. for a, to push in the first side. So Nathan Redman basically had a one-on-one with the goalkeeper at that point, and he puts it in quite easily. Um, anyway, we talked about the fact that they went down to 10 men not so long after that. So they went 1-0 up. In the eighth minute, they were down to 10 men in the 29th, two yellow cards. Uh, there was a long ball over the top to Michael Obafemi. I think it was only one, one of the only times we saw that used, actually, which is a yeah. surprise because it ended up getting a red card. And he's got pace, hasn't he? So that's maybe something to look at. But I can't remember who played the ball. But anyway, Obafemi gets brought down just outside the box. Um, I think he was the last man, but there was people maybe in line with him. Uh, which I don't think would ever get into the ball. But I think maybe what saves it being a straight red, not that it would have mattered anyway, is the fact that it was a heavy touch from Obafemi, so I'm not sure he would have got the ball either. Yeah, probably a factor. Yeah. And probably what, what the ref was looking at. But I think he, he had such an easy decision then because he was already on a yellow. Yeah. So I'll just give him a second yellow, so it's made it easier for him. Yeah. So, that, as Lee said earlier, that kind of levelled the game. Yeah, I mean, it looked... Uh, in periods before that, that it could have been a long afternoon for Swansea. Ah. And after that, it was a game of football. Yeah, it made, it made it a cup tie then, because it, it evened it up. But I think before that, I, I think we would have been comfortably beaten the way the game was going. We couldn't get our yeah. foot on the ball at all before that. It was awful. 
No, it wasn't. It wasn't the best. I don't think much else happened in the first half, to be honest. No, I, can't, I literally can't remember anything. Um, anything of of interest, anyway, uh, other than the fact that both of centre backs got a yellow card. <laughs> Classic Ryan Bennett one, and then uh, Brandon Cooper oh. also as well. You can put you can put your house on Ryan Bennett yellow card every game. I think you'd be I think you'd be up at the end of the season. No, I know. It's it's definitely the one that's. Uh, consistent at the moment um okay going into the second half then joe perot finally gets an equalizer in the 77th minutes so it took a while i think we were huffing and puffing for quite some time before we finally got the breakthrough um and to be fair after we went one nil up the period between that goal and 90 minutes so about 15 minutes of play we probably looked like the team that was going to win the game before 90 minutes yeah, in all fairness, and the goal, it was a pretty good move as well. Like, they sort yeah. of showed what they can do. There was a nice, lovely bit of passing, and Norton goes through the knee and cut it back. I mean, they, they cut them open. Um, so it was a good bit of play. They did start to play better then, and good yeah. finish from Pro as well. So Norton was getting a bit of stick from the commentators saying he wasn't making any runs, and then he made one run down the uh, byline, got in behind, played the ball across, and he ended up in a goal. But, I mean, he's been playing centre-back all year. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Pepsi just coming up, but um, there we are. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Can't stuff. even cut it out now because we use the stream yard. Oh well. <laughs> anyway, can yeah, not, no one's can we not cut playing. it out anymore. So I'm not swearing. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't matter if you swear, really. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I can, but it'd take a long, long, lot longer, and I'd have yeah. to render the whole video then, which I don't have to do now because we use the stream yard. So fair. It's fine. People can can hear the lovely noise that just uh, was made. <laughs> Um, yeah, so no one's been playing centre back all season. So I mean, do, uh, what? To how easy is it to switch your mentality from going from one role to the other? And it's not even like we've been playing right backs all year. They've been playing right wing backs, so the role yeah. is slightly deeper than what's normally expected. Like when Led was playing, for example. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, like how forward do you well, want Norton and Norton to hasn't go? played. Norton hasn't played right back for a long time, has he? No. And how forward do you want him and Manning to go when there's four at the back? It's not like you've got the extra centre back to cover when one of them's going so far forward. Yeah. In this system, obviously in a wing back system, that is the main goal. But you've got the extra centre back there and probably Downs as well, covering somewhere back. So yeah, it's um, different rollers, isn't it? I guess. But uh, ended up in a goal. And speaking of Joel Perot, who did blast this one into the top left corner, he had a chance to wrap the game up not long before the end. Played in by uh, Oberfermi, I believe it was. That was the chance. Played one on one through with the keeper, but um, takes maybe one or two touches too many. Allows the covering defender to close the angle off, which makes his shot harder. And by the time he does make the shot, he just it does get saved by the keeper's sprawling legs. Um, yeah, yeah bit a big chance to wrap up the game there. I think everyone thought he was going to put it in. I think he needs to take it a bit earlier so the angle's not closed down too much, but it wasn't probably the easiest chance either with the pace yeah. and the angle he was coming in. It's probably just the expectancy now, though, because he's put so many of them away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a big chance to wrap it up there. To be fair, we gone, could have gone through. Would've you think we would have won from that point, but then at the same time, when we can, the way we conceded later on, who's to say oh. we wouldn't have conceded the same way straight away then? Yeah, we'll get to that. So, yeah, I mean, substitutions then. So Grimes came on a bit earlier than what we've just discussed uh, for Walsh. I think the tempo definitely increased when Grimes came on. You noticed he was on the pitch. Yeah. Which, I mean, it feels obvious for me to say, but some people still don't see what he does to the team. But I think... No. We missed him when he wasn't there. Yeah, we've, I know. Well, we, as everyone knows, we just sort of kind of push Grimes in everyone's face to me. But I think we just we just can't seem to tick without him now. Yeah. Um, just with the way he moves the ball, it just gets everything going. Like you said, the tempo increases. It all goes through him in that in that in that pocket. Yeah. Um, and Cham came on as well for Brandon Cooper, and I think Downs slotted back in the centre back during that period after he came on. Um, and Jan Dander made an appearance, your favourite as well, in the 85th minute coming on for Liam Cullen, who we didn't actually speak about, but Liam Cullen and Oberfemi were acting as inside forwards, left and right of Pirro. Yeah, 
we kind of out of position, and they, I don't think. Just, yeah, yeah, this, it's not where they should be, should they? It just no. doesn't. It just didn't seem to work. No. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm done. The one of the fringe players that was handed an opportunity. Had, to be fair, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything wrong. He, he did right. He game, did do one fair. thing wrong. What's right at the up? end. Oh, I'm surprised I missed that. Where I think it was Grimes played a lovely cross ball to him, cross field ball, and he was kind oh, of like, yeah. no, on I the edge of the box, um, yeah. and he literally misses the ball, and it just runs up to touch. And it's not like a hard ball to control either. He just drops his concentration. And this is like with three two down, with less than a minute left to play in injury time of the last part of extra time. Yeah. Yeah, well, I won't get I won't get into it again. I feel harsh now because I always sort of get but how how has he not got a loan move yet? No, even like last season or the season before, like how has he not got on loan at any point doing Well he'd be it? gone in the summer. Is he out of contract in the summer? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably yeah. That's I, probably I can't he hasn't see gone a world where we, he's offered a new deal. No, not surely not, but we'll see. I feel harsh because I like I have I you know, I don't really Look at you now trying to much. rein it all back in after you said all no, this I stuff. No, I just feel harsh because, like, like, he came on on the weekend and I was just like, I was already I like, think he had a, upset. He didn't have a bad game, I don't think. No, he, he didn't, did, no, he didn't game have a bad game. I just think he's just not good enough for this level, I think. Maybe if he dropped down a league. He needed he to come on and actually better. make something happen and then that's how he would have saved his Swan's career. But, you know, it just didn't happen and that's the tale of his time here, I guess, so... When he does leave, we'll have to just do a full video on this time. But can I just... I want to say one thing, though, before he does go, because he is the central attack in midfielder, first and foremost. And we have not played a central attack in midfielder for, like, 90% of the time he's been here. Yeah, so, at the same time as we say, and he hasn't done good enough, we bought, brought him for a position... That at the time, Burst and Selena occupied, and he was kind of there coming on. And he did okay, actually, in his first year coming on under Graham Potter. He, you know, when he did come on a couple of times, he wasn't loads in that year, but he did okay. He did all right under Steve Cooper a couple of times, probably the first half of that season. And then we changed to five at the back, and he, he was played a couple of times in centre midfield, expected to do more of the. Yeah, that's fair. But like, what, like stuff. It just begs the question again, Ollie, why has he not gone out on loan? We yeah. literally have not had a position for him for two exactly. seasons, really. Yeah, we've tried him on the left wing. We've tried him in centre midfield, but that's not what he is. So, yeah, why is he still here, I guess, is, is the is the question. Um, yeah. yeah. Felton came on um, for extra time, like you said. Well, you said about the cup tie thing. I thought they would have brought him on, like, in normal time, to if that was the goal. Yeah, I know, but I I don't know why he was on the like I don't know why he was oh, on the I'm bench. I'm lying. He came on like in injury time before full time. So no, I th- I think no, you're right. It probably says ninety on there, but I I'm sure he oh, came okay. on like in oh, the gap between full time and additional minutes, and then it goes yeah. back to ninety. Okay, but they he came on like you, you yeah, are right, like in the gap on, between full time yeah. and extra time. But I don't know, like I would have start like why well, they could have started him really. Like surely yeah. he can contribute Corey to that Smith team. It's just the biggest the mystery. If he doesn't leave in January, Fulton, it's just the biggest mystery in football as why. Like, hey, maybe he'll be in, maybe he'll be starting the next game now against Huddersfield. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> biggest turnaround because I thought he actually came on and did well. I thought he, he was making some good not... touches, and I was just like, how was he not getting more game time? He's offering as he much. Was brilliant as last year, and he's offering as much as Walsh. I don't understand how he can't kick the ball. He was brilliant last year. And then to go from that to not playing at all this season, like not even on the bench half the time. Like he was on the, he made the bench for a cup game and came on in extra time. He's so much better than that. But um I don't know if it's true or not, but I think like surprisingly he's he's one of the higher higher earners, I think. Um, well, we did sign him when we were in the Prem. And Bidwell is as well, apparently. Yeah. And I've seen the rumors. Of they're like um 
They Does it make sense, really? Because they've been there for a while. contract when we had parachute payments in it, like one of the first years, and Bidwell got signed in the second season. So yeah. parachute payments again. <laughs> and I think, obviously, the ultimate goal was to get back up to the Prem before the parachute payments ran out. And we did have two cracks at the playoffs, so it's not like they didn't get close. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe that is... Uh, I mean, yeah, it could be. But, like, if he's here, you're still paying him. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know if he's fallen out. It's like Martin Martin thing or just... when he was on that appearance clause and they just put him on the bench. Well, the look, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was something to do with that as well. Like, if he has, like, I don't know, another assist or something or another goal that he probably make some deal like releases a clause or something in his car it wouldn't surprise me at all but like surely mac rhymes is the highest earner now you'd imagine i'd imagine so yeah i'd imagine he probably but, is yeah they're just content to just him being the star player then yeah just felt then it's like nah we're not you don't justify the wage but it's weird i don't know i know but there's been so much activity <coughs> already <coughs> sorry in the um in the transfer window, for, even for yeah. us this early, like players going now, I'm surprised all this time he hasn't been playing. If he was going, that like nothing I thought he was out of the door as soon as the window opened. I did as well. You'd be surprised because he, he hasn't been playing at all. Like he has not even been on the bench like up to Christmas. I'd love to know the last time he was on the bench. Yeah. But um, yeah, you'd think that something would be in place now, but I don't know. Maybe anyway. Maybe I he's thought not he had good. a positive contribution. So hopefully yeah, I thought he did um, well. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe Russell Martin will have a change of heart. I doubt it, but I'd rather send like Liam Walsh on loan or something or sell him. I don't know. I just think he offers more. I mean, I just... None of the different types of players, but I don't think what's Walsh actually done. The last game, actually, they said in the game, the last time he played was against Lincoln in the first half, got hooked to half-time after we went 3-0 down. Who now, Walsh? Yeah. Lincoln? Not Lincoln. Luton. Oh, Luton. Oh, yeah, when we Sorry. come back, yeah. No, I was thinking then. Lincoln on the head because of... Yeah, you were thinking of Lincoln for later, later. yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah we were 3-0 down at half-time. Was that the last time he played? Um, started, sorry, maybe. Last time he started, but yeah. Yeah, it would make more sense to send, like, Walsh out on loan and Dander and keep Fulton. I'd be happy with that. Yeah, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, the last sub was Reese Williams, who came on 114 minutes for Corey Smith. He went to right back. I think um, Kyle Norton went into centre back as Downs went forward back into midfield. Um, but I think every time Reese Williams touched the ball, it was only for six minutes. But I think every time he touched the ball, he gave it away. It wasn't yeah, a good showing. No, I just. Oh, there we are. Yeah, <laughs> I feel sorry for him. Like he just, I since he played in that Luton game, going back to that Luton game, and didn't he go off at half time as well? And then he there was um, an investigation for racial abuse. I think. Oh, I yeah. don't think he just hasn't done anything since then. Um, and every time he's played, he's probably short of confidence and everything, but he's just, no, nah, this has not worked out at all. He's been awful when he's played. I'm surprised he's still here because obviously Leb got called back, which was the shocking one, but we thought he was going to be going as well back to Liverpool. Maybe maybe Liverpool don't want to recall him. Well, they were making a fuss about it, weren't they? About him not playing. Yeah. And he can't even get on the bench when we sub off Brandon Cooper. Um, get on a pitch when we sub off Brandon Cooper. So, yeah, we, we'll, it may be that they're um, we're kind of operating one in one out at the moment. It seems so unless they got something lined up, maybe they're keeping him as cover. Yeah, we could have been recovering from COVID as well. I guess we don't really know um, in terms of the players, yeah, and how much game time they were allowed and stuff like that. Um, yeah, well, we didn't talk about what actually happened in extra time, so we actually took the lead. Which uh, seems crazy when you see how the match ended up finishing. But yeah, in the 94th minute, so quite soon after the restart, and Cham plays across the box with Bo- uh, well, can't get my words out. And Cham plays across across the box, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> which uh, gets deflected quite horribly, actually, for the Southampton player, Bednarek, who puts it into his own net. Um, we go 2 1 up. We think, oh, they don't do. They're down to 10 men. We've actually been in the ascendancy, especially like second half of the 90 minutes, especially after Grimes came on, looked a lot better. Um, I think we're going to go out and close this game out. And before they could stop showing you replays of the goal, there was another goal in our net this time where Southampton equalised straight away, basically played kickoff. 
uh, hoofed down the right to Shane Long, who got the better of Manning. Manning gets back, but doesn't manage to block the cross. Ball's played in and basically a tap in for um, El Yunusi. <laughs> I don't know if I said his name yeah. right. Um, he does kind of push Bennett out of the way a little bit, makes a bit of space and just puts it in the net. But yeah, we need to be dealing with that better. And again, straight away from kickoff, I've seen it a couple this, of times recently. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, you're right. He does push Bennett a bit, which makes that space. You know, maybe it's a niggly one. Um, but more like more to the point, like what is going on with us conceding straight after kickoff? That, like once maybe, but it, it is actually a theme now because Reading did it twice against us. Um, the two goals we scored against Red in at home when it was three two, they scored straight after. I think Forrest done it as well. One of their goals, I think, when we scored, they scored straight after. Yeah. And now did, again yeah. on, uh, and that was our last game. Um, before. Be the, interesting the break. to watch the replay of all of those goals. See if there's a theme because they've ident- well, the teams the must have thing. identified something. They must have. Yeah. Well, the BBC was fluke, saying. Is it? The BBC was saying, and before I get onto that point, actually, the third goal Southampton scored, the winning goal. Um, assisted by James Wood Prowse down the same side on the right hand side. It would, he did put a pearl of a cross in, but it was defended really poorly again. People not in the right positions. It seems like a lot of space to exploit. But it's a whipped ball into the box and Shane Long finishes. When's the last time he scored, by the way? Um, <laughs> he had a good game when he came on, to be fair. But yeah, um, he, did, actually, he, yeah. finished, he finished the, the ball. Uh, but like the down man inside again, and BBC said from the beginning, and I actually was thinking, like, oh, it seemed to be your man in his back a bit here. I thought he's had a good season so far. But they were identifying how since Manning has been predominantly playing left sided if his wing back or left back in this game's case, um, and Bidwell has been out with the team. And we know Bidwell originally went out with the team when he had the birth of his child, which fair enough, but it didn't seem to have come back at all ever since then. And he was on the bench again here today. But the BBC was saying that seemed to correlate when we started conceding more goals. Because at the yeah. start of the season, we weren't really conceding goals. We had like five matches at the home stadium and we conceded like one or something very low. Um, and then all of a sudden they were saying, you know, we started scoring goals. We know that. We know we started scoring. Patterson, Pirro started scoring a few more goals. But at the same time, we, we're not keeping as many clean sheets and we're conceding a lot more. And they seem to think there's a, there's a theme since Manning's been in the team at left back and Bidwell has not been in the team because remember Manning was playing left centre back with Bidwell at left wing back for a lot of the early season yeah um, Manning does probably get I think further forward than Bidwell yeah which look I'm not blaming him obviously he's doing what he's been asked to do there but like perhaps the balance of them both works quite well together Manning's good at his on his feet Bidwell is a bit more defensively minded and we don't get caught out as much when they're both there. But these two goals come to a man inside. Both times the players got past him. He's tracking back, trying to get goal side, not blocking the cross. I mean, you could credit him for getting back well, but he doesn't block the cross ultimately in the end. Um, maybe there is a theme there. So I'm wondering if perhaps these other games where we've conceded straight after half time have they come down the same side? Uh yeah, we'd like to be good to be good to have a look at look at them back to see if it is. But you are right, because um the forest game and we conceded four. It was man in at uh, like wing back, and I think Reese William, no Cabango, with him on that side. Yeah. And then the um, the game, the, the other game, well, the red in game, when we conceded three, it was man in and uh, Reese Williams, because we were saying this before the break, weren't we, that we've been defending so poorly, and we haven't seen for ages. We hadn't seen that back five that we were used to when we were playing well. With Bidwell, Manning, Norton, Bennett, and Led on the other side. I don't know he's gone yeah. now, but um, yeah, we hadn't seen that for ages. And I think we shared that, like, coincided with us conceding loads of goals and losing games. I'm wondering if it's a case of when Manning and Bidwell play together, both of them are naturally left backs, right? So if Bidwell is bombing on or doing his wing back role, Manning knows to cover that left sided space. And he's also got the extra support of the third centre-back in the middle that will come across a little bit to help it. Whereas yeah. when it's like Manning playing left wing-back with a centre-back as left centre-back, maybe when Manning's bombing up the pitch, and again, Cabango isolated a left-back, like he's not getting the support as a centre-back playing in that area of the pitch because Manning is so far forward. Whereas yeah. when Bidwell and Manning are doing it together because they're both 
men- mentally left backs, they can deal with it better. Yeah, it makes sense. Know. Yeah, it yeah, makes sense. It's definitely an area to to look at, perhaps. Anyway, but um, I think it's just something that hasn't been addressed yet, even from like the start of the season. I think the back five is just it just still feels like a makeshift to me. I know it was working well for for a while when we had a good run of form, but it just still seems like a just filling in the gaps. Like, you know, yeah. can we realistically, can you realistically play a back five with four fullbacks going forward? Yeah, it's difficult. The questions still need answering, I think. See what happens by the end of the transfer window. But yeah, um, but on that, like, I think like the theme as well, um, like the last games before we had the gap and this game, we just look all over the shop defensively. It's getting a bit worrying now, unless they do something in the transfer window. Because we had the games before Christmas, Red in scored three against us. And they've been awful since as well, Red in. Um, I think that's the only game they've won in like eight or nine games, I think it was. And they've scored like seven goals, I was reading. And three of them were against us. And then like yeah. Bournemouth hammered us, Forest hammered us. And, we, and it's not even, you know, sometimes when we've been down the stadium and you watch a team and, you know, they just cut us open and you think, oh my God, like what a good side, fair enough. But we just seem to be, you watch some of the goals and it looks like Sunday league defending. It, we just look all over the place. And it's, it's just becoming a little mistake when you're leaving gaps here and it's just too easy for the opposition. It's not like they've necessarily <laughs> like created a really good goal. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're at about the halfway point of the season. So there's definitely things Russell Martin needs to look at to consider and see what he can do by the end of the season. I'd like to say right now, we're not really at risk of bottom three. I think there's too far away, like Derby and um, some of the teams down there struggling too much. We'd have a little bit enough to stay up, but we are getting sucked into the bottom half again. I know we've got a couple of games in hand now, so it's not unrealistic. No, I know, but it's, um, currently. it's, um, it's better to have the points on the board and the game in, games in hand, because even oh, yeah, the games definitely. in hand then become like... More no, pressure wise, if you're only really. like four points off, I don't know what we are at the moment, it's more than that, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're three points off the relegation zone, but you've got like five games in hand, those five yeah. games are massive. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. I think you're I think you're right. We said at the beginning of the season we'd be sort of in that area. Um, but I am a bit worried that we might get sucked into a bit of a, a yeah, bit of a, think bit of a fight if it carries we'll on the way it is, but We'll see what happens. Change. Like it is three, those three games could have been, you know, it, it could have changed this table so much. And oh it's yeah, just frustrating yeah. that we've not yeah. been able to play. Well, I say three games. It's four games really. When you look at some teams, oh, it's all over the place across the board, isn't it? In the championships, yeah, so it's, it's hard to actually up. know yeah. where everyone is. It's not like one or two teams have got a game in hand. Like loads of teams have got loads of games in hand. So it's it's such a weird table to try and make out. It's a bit of a, yeah, it it's actually it's is a, bit of a right false now. table at the moment, and you don't know where anybody actually yeah. is at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, I think I say luckily, actually, all the teams <laughs> below us have got games in hand as well. It's only Derby that have played 25, but they've got one game in hand. Um, oh, anyway, yeah. let's let's move on to uh, the transfer stuff. But final thoughts on this match before we do, like, You've got chance to be missed, I think. Yeah, chance missed because even even now, like when even when I'm a bit older, I just love watching the FA Cup draw when we're in it, or any draw where the Swans are in it, and you can speculate like, oh, you know, who would we have had? Uh, Coventry, I think Southampton had. Um, Championship match. Yeah, I know, Another but it's it's just it's just it's just the fun of watching a draw when we're in it when you're waiting for our number to come out, and it's the yeah. FA Cup as well. Like last couple of years, we've had. I think we've had a tidy run, haven't we, in the FA Cup? Like, last couple, couple of years, of years in general, though, yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, we've been so to quote, it's got in the third round, a bit cut in, because I, 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 I love an FA Cup run. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I think it was a chance missed. But, you know, like I said, first first half hour, we didn't deserve it. We would have been well beaten. So, the red card let us back in. And then I think we had a, we just missed the chance then to go through. But Yeah, definitely. And it would have been nice to have the extra games to help us use them as an opportunity to give players a run out. But maybe now it gives us a better chance of making up some of these games in hand. It could be a silver lining. Yeah. 
Well, um, I believe that Mill Millwall went out, didn't they? Crystal Palace beat them. So why the can't we play Millwall be, in the next yeah. round? Do they allow that? I'm not sure. Surely, if you neither of you's got a match, there should be because it's, it's got to make got sense, got four it? matches to make up. Then where are you going to do them? So I don't yeah. end up like Rotherham where they had like stupid amount in the last two weeks of the season last year. Yeah. Is they playing every like two or three days or something stupid? Oh yeah, that was ridiculous. They might have stayed up actually because then just went down on the last day of the season. Yeah, with all those not saying we're going to be in that position. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> look, another word of Wine Street then. So got some exciting news because I think I didn't expect this one. I didn't actually see any rumours, but here it is. Um, we were all gutted with the departure of Ethan Led, of course. Bit of a shock. Um, I mean. It, it could be frustrating at Man United, maybe not so much at Bournemouth. We kind of did the same thing with Conor Gallagher a couple of seasons ago to Charlton. Essentially, I think Bournemouth are offering a better financial package to Manchester United, and that's why they've now got the player. Um, you might argue, does a club like Man United really need that sort of stuff from a loan deal that's meant to be designed to help a player get some first-team experience to potentially break into the first-team squad? And how much is the money that we're paying Les wages or appearance fees really help in a club like Man U. Ultimately, I think football is run by businessmen these days, so it doesn't matter how much money is. If it's extra, it's extra. It doesn't I, th- I know, it doesn't make sense to me, though, because, like, Led was on loan all season last year to MK Dons, if I'm right, or most of the season, Yeah. with Russell Martin. He started this season so well, and he was playing so well. Um, just didn't make sense to me, and I know, like, we've done it with Gallagher. But why, why are these... Um, like what is what's what's going on with these loan deals? Because it seems to be happening across the board now that you have someone yeah, well, on loan until the end of the season, and now it, it didn't happen before. Like I, I don't know if it's since like since like COVID and stuff that people have been doing it and recalling people when they've had maybe they want extra yeah uh, sort of numbers in the squad in case players go down. But like it's, it's been happening so much for the last two seasons where everybody's just getting recalled in January. Like it happened with us with. Gibbs White, um, G- Girocares, is it? I can still not say his name. Got yeah. recalled and went to commentary. That was more um, understandable because he wasn't playing. Yeah, no, I, I, I get, I get that, but it just seems to be happening all the time now. I know, like Cardiff had Giles Ryan recalled. Giles has gone back. We, we did it with Conor Gallagher. We did it with Conor Gallagher last year. Last year, no, like that Giles and uh... <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be carnage. I don't think. I just, <laughs> I think the EFL would have to just say, can you not do it? <laughs> and he scores on the derby. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. It's um, well, I, yeah, well, it's just the question I just keep tapping it, in all the time. The question now, I have about it is like, obviously, same with us when we did it with Gallagher, but how does Bournemouth approach Man United about a player that's already on loan? Or is Man United like offering him out again? Because if he's already somewhere, why is he really being asked about? Well, this is the thing. This is speculation as well. Is it not partly on Laird as well? Does he not say, oh, well, yeah, I'm happy to go to Bournemouth and push myself to the top of the league rather than... Well, I guess I guess maybe he's told that this, this could happen and this is happening and how do you feel about it? And he's probably not going to say no, is he? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, surely somebody could say, like, oh, well... I don't think he's offering here. his services out, but... um. Because well, like he's playing every game. Might be. He's playing every game here. So would he be playing every game at Bournemouth? I don't know who's their right back now. Oh, I can't remember. Um, no, I can't remember now. But um, yeah, they don't. Maybe. They don't play wing backs, do they? No, I don't think. Well, they, yeah, no, I I, so it, it's a good point, though. I don't know how. I don't know how that comes about when he's because it's always happy. like the day after the same day they recall that in a different club it's never like they've been recalled two weeks later yeah it's done a different club they've literally gone from swansea to bournemouth essentially isn't he yeah so yeah i didn't i i didn't really think of it like that. like how does that even like yeah were we, and if, if we're unaware of it or are we aware of it like maybe i don't know we yeah were, and that's how we've got this guy in um quite quick but let's talk a man about united anyway. really gonna be like oh yeah. are they gonna look at it and go oh we want you to go to bournemouth now like surely Bournemouth well, they're must... at the top of the table. I don't, maybe I don't know. Man United is a weird club in it, but yeah. Anyway, um, we've ended up with Cyrus Christie on loan from Fulham. That's a good signing, though, isn't it? As a replacement. Yeah, I think I think it's a good signing. Like 
championship quality, like knows the league. I think it is a good. He's had Premier League experience as well, though more than Led would have. <laughs> yeah, good signing. Um, I think, but again, I always think our. I don't want to sound too like thing again, too negative, but I said it after the trans after every transfer window. Now I look at it and we just seem to be weathering the squad away. We're always bringing in less quality than what we're giving out. If you know what I mean. And this is a this is a big example because, like, good player, good experienced player, but he's not going to offer what Led was. Do you think? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I thought he'd done right for Fulham though, even in the Prem, didn't he? Yeah, well, you know, I could be wrong, but is he going to offer the same sort of controversial game that led opinion? Does? Yeah. I think the fan base has seemed quite happy with this signing, but I'm, oh no, I like I mean, I'm happy with the signing. I am happy yeah, with the signing. I, I think it's a good signing. But like Led was obviously playing in League One last year, and we've taken him in as a bit of an unknown at this level. He's done well. Um, so, and I say he's done well. He kind of fizzled out in the last couple of games, really. I say fizzled, the whole squad has, but he's not been as exciting in the last few games as he was earlier in the season. Um, maybe the experience of someone like Christie, who's played at a higher level and has had a lot more games behind him, will help us defensively. And that's yeah, what I we think need. so. Well, yeah, but maybe not in that position, though, as a wing back. Because yeah. that's our focal attacking point now. Like I said, with what I'm saying is, is he going to offer the same attacking threat that Led was? Because he was our he was our main focus for attacks. Yeah, everything was going through him down that side. Now, is he going to offer that same? He probably will. He would definitely will defensively. Probably more, you know, like you said, more experience at this level and played in the Premier League. No doubt he'll have um, a better head on him when it comes to defending. But is he going to offer the same? The same going forward, which is what we well, need. Time will tell. Um, and I think he's quite he's decent available. going forward as well. I've seen him yeah. you know, play a couple of times, but um, we'll see. He's available for the match against Huddersfield on the weekend. So. Yeah, I think he goes straight in. Well, I, I, I was wondering if it was going to be Kyle Joseph or uh, Latibodia playing there. but Oh, yeah, we recalled Kyle Joseph as well. Yeah, which is in my list here, but we'll get to him now. Um Swansea complete signing of goalkeeper Andy Fisher. We reported this one a couple of times saying they looked like it was going to happen. From MK Dons, obviously he's worked with Russell Martin before. Um, does he go straight in? I don't know. Well, uh, on the well, Bender went out, didn't he? Like I, like I was going to say, it seems to be Spoilers a one-in, one-out. So. Like, it's in, it's oh, in, sorry. It's in the list. But it's just it's you're taking away my theme. My whole my whole big note was one in, one out. That was the only thing I had to offer this oh, entire sorry. video. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Well, no, like we said with lead, anyway, lead is out and Christie's come in. Um yeah, I don't know. Well, I think he might go straight in because everybody seems to be convinced that we were desperate for a new keeper, but I don't think. Can I just say interrupt you there? Can you see here? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the cameraman is like reflecting in the swan's badge. <laughs> it's quality, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah. I wonder if he'll go on the bench first. I think I think that he will start him because he's come. He's obviously the keeper that he wants. Bender and Hamer were here when he arrived, and now he signed him from his old club. Who he managed last year. I think it's who he wants. I think he goes straight in. Yeah, but I think maybe he'll put him on the bench because he's just come, get him a bit of time to warm up, and then. When Hamer makes a mistake, he'll swap him around, and I'll be it. Like, and he's got a reason as well. Then I don't know. I I I, I won't be surprised if he puts him straight in Saturday, and that'll oh. be the that'll be the that'll be. So you guess the we'll fan hub uh, team predictions right then. I'll be putting I'll be putting Fisher in there. No, first one on the team sheet. There we go. So Swansea recall Kyle Joseph from Cheltenham. You said he had a quite a good uh, spell at Cheltenham, didn't you? Yeah, he scored a couple of goals. Yeah. Um. But I don't know. That's a strange one because are we going to play him? Well, maybe he was. Oh, I don't know. I mean, Whitaker and oh, spoilers again. Whitaker <laughs> and Cullen are both gone. Maybe they were happy with what they saw from Kyle Joseph and think that he'll offer more. I don't know where they're planning on playing him because we we thought maybe he was cover for Led going. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting. I mean, he was cup tied against Southampton, so we couldn't play in the FA Cup. Unless... That's why he wasn't featured or on the bench. In yeah. that game, unless he, um, I forgot what I was going to say now, unless he is just cover now, because obviously, like you said, we've lost two strikers. 
Um, yeah. Unless he is just cover now. But that just seems that seems mad to me to bring him. He was getting game time and there must be a plan for him. I think um, Russell was talking about uh, Brandon Cooper last season when he got recalled from Newport, got injured, and that like stopped his season. He said he didn't want Kyle Joseph having to be recalled and something out, and he doesn't play basically. So it must be something they're thinking about. Yeah, don't know what though. Morgan Whitaker seals Lincoln low moves. This fell through in the summer. It's finally happened. I mean. In hindsight, looking back now, like what a silly thing for it to fall through in the summer because he's been just doing nothing for like four or five months. Uh, like, he's got scored already, hasn't anyway. he? Scored yeah, already. He scored well. his debut. Yeah, I saw the goal. It was a nice tidy finish. Yeah, what, yeah, definitely what he needed. Just get him out, get some game time. Hopefully, get some goals under his belt. Come back, uh, come yeah. back a different player. Hopefully it has been a waste. Back. It has been a waste of six months of his career. Yep, that that fell through. Or four months, five months. Yep, and interestingly enough, um, Liam Cullen's joining him. Now, this seems yeah. weird to me that they go into the same club. I, why? I don't, I don't get it. So maybe one of them will still not play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Because they've already got Chris Maguire and Lincoln scored a hat-trick in midweek. So surely one of them is going to be on the bench if they play. Unless they play using with the guy as a winger now or...? Did they play him a striker? Maybe, well, I don't know. Obviously, we all thought he was a striker, and then Cooper kept using him as a winger, and we were like confused. Yeah, I, I don't know. So that that seems odd to me, but we'll see if uh, they both get some game time. I hope Probably that both they. Need it. I hope it'd be great if they just both play and they just carve up and score loads of goals between them, and then they come back to us. Then I wonder if that's a a future move to put them two together. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But, um, so, like, yeah, Kyle Joseph back, those two out. I was going to say these, this leaves us quite light up front if, like, Perot gets injured. Um, you've got Obafemi, but then it's Kyle Joseph, I guess. Uh, where Whether we're planning to bring in another forward, I don't know. <clears throat> Stephen Bender on loan to Peterborough. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I read in um, the Peterborough chairman, then he was tweeting and said uh, he's taking a pay cut to go there, I think, on loan. Um, th- surely he still gets the same wages, doesn't he? That's what I thought, but that's what he tweeted that he's taken a pay cut. But I was thinking, surely they just because well, perhaps they, like, just gone they couldn't wages. cover what swans were asking. And Bender said, like, it's fine, uh, I'll maybe. just take the cut because I want to play. Yeah, yeah, that makes but sense. then if that is the case, and I'd be saying, like, uh, Swan should just pay the wages. Like, if the, he's a young player, the, you want him to go get experience, just cover the difference. <laughs> I know, uh, yeah. I know it's like hard if you're trying to. If the finance situation at the moment is all not very good for a lot of clubs, but yeah, it's in our, our interest for him to get game time and yeah, rather I, than sit here and pay him anyway. Again, I I hope that, and he's staying in the championship as well, which is good. So I hope that he just has a really good rest of the season now. Is he going to outstep keeper like, or is he going to be on a bench for Peterborough instead? I don't know. Surely it would make sense that he would be starting now. Why would you go and loan somewhere if you're going to be in the same position? Yeah, anyway? surely. And Peter did Peterborough down the bottom as well, so I'd, maybe they maybe they needed a keeper. But I hope, like again, I think I know like he was oh, he wasn't great, was he? When he was playing, he made a lot of mistakes. But I think there's something there. I I wouldn't want to see him. He made some good saves, but I think it was a lot of mistakes with the playing out from the back. Yeah, which but we thought that was like, do. but that. We thought that that was the way he'd been asked to play, but then when Hamer came in, we didn't see that at all. And we didn't see like oh, I don't know. He was, coming out. He has done it a couple of times recently. He did it against Southampton a couple of times. But yeah, like, but not as much as Ben. It wasn't necessarily stuff that was his fault. It was like the players playing him into a difficult one, and he's like just got it away at last minute. Yeah, I know, but like I mean, like Bender was completely different. He was yeah. trying to be like Neuer, wasn't he? Yeah, maybe um, Neuer's his inspiration. Yeah, maybe, but then it just seemed to end then when Hamer came in so much. So yeah. I don't know. And again, like uh, he obviously wants Fisher in because he obviously knows him. But did did we need a keeper? Was that a priority? I don't know. I know Hamer made a few mistakes. Perhaps he thinks it's the key for like sorting the defense out or playing. Yeah, the maybe. System he wants to play. Maybe you maybe. need to trust your keeper, don't you? I guess. 
but that's the, it's the first thing he's got done. So he obviously won, won did it. Uh, so two youngsters join in the academy, Corey Herford and Joe Thomas, um, following successful trials. Nice. So these might be ones for the future. Hopefully, they uh, they have good times in the academy, and we get to see a little bit more of their faces in the upcoming years. So uh, well done. Yeah, it's good guys. that they're still signing these players, isn't it? Yeah, they're from local areas as well. I think. Yeah, it's so good. Brain yeah, Ferry was it? Was and, good, um, yeah. Shipping them home. Yeah, one more local than the other. You have some new contracts as well. So Dan Williams extends his uh, Swansea stay, and he's also expected to go on loan. I think not that not confirmed yet though. So June 2023, so next year, with an option good. to extend another year afterwards. That's good news. Yeah. Still taking over the academy, aren't they? We seem to still. Uh... There's a couple coming through still. Yeah, still like we said about like obviously maybe not as much, but it still seems to be. Uh... You still seem to be looking after it. Yeah, and another one, Lincoln McFadden, who has made, I think, a first-team uh, appearance this season. Yeah. Left back. Um, signed a contract extension through to 2024. So, um, good news there. Another yeah. one coming through the academy. And another couple from the under-23s getting new deals. Sam Leverett and Jacob Jones. Yeah. So I'll yeah, another couple. But I haven't really seen too much of these ones. But obviously, it's good. They must be doing something right to get new deals. Yeah, um, and that's good news for us going forward. So, any more transfer stuff that I've missed? Uh, nothing, nothing concrete. Rumors, but uh, who else have been linked with? Then who have you seen? Well, who's the other guy from MK Dons? Um, oh, there's a couple of League One, isn't there? Isn't there like someone that we're after that Blackburn are after as well? Yeah, I'm just trying to think what that guy's name was now. It's, I've seen it so many times. O'Reilly, is it? Is it? Oh, O'Reilly. Right, O'Reilly. He scored the other night, didn't he, against um, Wimbledon as well. Um, so, I don't know. That's another one that I've seen. Um, I've seen a few things about Cabango going to West Ham as well. Yeah, you said something about that, but I haven't seen too much. Surely not. Although he wasn't in the squad the other day. I thought it was COVID-related, but maybe... Surely not. Now you said it. Surely not. Is he good enough to go to West Ham? I don't think he's played enough this season and done enough good. But like he was linked to Bayern Munich not so long ago, wasn't he? Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, bloody hell, I forgot about that. Well, I, I mean, don't know. That's a strange was one. He quoted, wasn't it? But um, that seems low. That's a strange one. Because seeing uh, that Jamie Patterson is unlikely to be available for the Huddersfield game. Oh yeah, you're right. You must be right then with that with COVID. Uh, I don't know. I think he's back in training, but says he fell ill in training. So I don't know. I don't know what was wrong altogether. But yeah, I mean, that's that's going to be a miss for sure. Yeah, but I'm just thinking now of the transfer window. Um, what else do we need? I think centre back. I would like a centre back. Yeah, I think we need a ball playing centre back definitely. And I would like a forward that can either play perhaps striker or behind the striker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the so. two two positions that I would. I know, want. like Downs has been good <laughs> going back into the back three, but I don't want to see him there. I want to see him and Grimes in the middle. Yeah, because that just works so well. I want to see him and Grimes in the middle, and then um, maybe we need another sort of um, another centre back that can play where Bennett plays. Because I don't, I just think I don't know. I I. I love Bennett. Like I think he's been brilliant, but just lately, I think in this he's system, I think he gets found dodgy, out on that side because he essentially goes to play right back when the full back goes forward, and it's just it's just not going to happen, is it? Yeah, it's scary sometimes. Yeah. Um, another bit of news as well: the QPR game that was rearranged uh, has been selected for Sky Sports on Tuesday, the twenty fifth of January. Oh yeah, we got quite a few Sky games, haven't we? Bournemouth, Blackburn, and West Brom as well. All the games are going to get hammered. <laughs> Let's hope uh, that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, okay, so that's everything. We'll see then. There's a couple of weeks obviously left in the transfer window. I think Jake Bidwell has been linked to Birmingham as well, I saw somewhere. And we are not recalling Jordan Garrick. Oh, we're not, now, are we? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, leave him there. 
because I think he's playing well. Plymouth are doing all right in League One. I'll use another one. Preston are also monitoring Jake Bidwell. Seems a shame to say, like, if he goes to another championship club. I hate that, but I think I think he is one of the higher earners. He's been linked now a couple of times. He was link, linked with Borough in the summer, wasn't he? Yeah, um, apparently there's a contract standoff between him and the Swans, so I guess the higher earner narrative that you're saying makes sense. They're probably offering him a new deal where the pay cut, he doesn't want to take it, is what I would gather from that. When is his contract? Obviously in the summer as well. Yeah, I believe, um, or maybe one more year after this year. So either mm. in the summer or another year. Fair enough. I can't remember if he signed the two-year deal or three-year deal when he came in. Oh no, he's been here three years now, hasn't he? This is the third season. So this me must be up at the end of the year. Yeah, it must be. And um yeah, so this whole thing about him being out of the team since his baby was born, maybe it was a bit of a cover up then if it's a bit of a contract dispute, and that's why he's not getting in the team. Maybe. But, be interesting to see now who plays regularly um going forward now. Yeah. Andy Fisher straight in. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, I think that that is it for now. Anyway, so looking ahead then, Huddersfield on the weekend away. I should put a clip in you, but I, I can't I haven't got it on me to hand. But last time one of one of the boys was on the podcast, John, <laughs> <laughs> who has been in hiding ever since. <laughs> we were yeah. on good form actually, when we it was like nearly a year ago now, probably in February when we were on good form. Um <coughs> And we went away to Huddersfield <laughs> and he, uh, he came on the podcast and said he was so confident that we're not losing the game and then we got thumped 4-1. Yeah. And that, <laughs> yeah, and that, that was the start of the the downfall, downfall. wasn't it? Yeah, we, we haven't seen him so since well after that point. I think, yeah, I think he has gone off, off the mark now. Off the radar. He's uh, God. hiding. I um, was thinking as well the other day, because um, you were saying about an older video, we've a year now, haven't we? We've been going a year. Yeah. We, January well, last year. It's close, isn't it? It's it's. I don't know what exact date it is. It's it's soon, if not be. Yeah. I can't find remember. Out. Maybe try and do Jan- a special episode. It was January last year. At some point, we probably missed it. We yeah. missed our anniversary. Well, I've looked on our first video was. Um, it was the Barnsley anyway. game in December? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, I think. I thought we started we... January. The sixteenth of January was the Barnsley game away. In the league. Um, and I think that was the first video we did either after the game or or before the game in the build up. So we'd be probably round about now. It was, it was a year ago when we started. Fair enough. Um I'll have a look for you right now. Eleven months ago it says the first one. So let's uh the twentieth of January our first video was published. Twentieth of January, there we are. So it was we're after close. the bands. So yeah. We're coming up. We're one week away from the anniversary. We didn't miss it then. We didn't miss it. <laughs> but yeah, looking at the Huddersfield game. So Huddersfield the sixth in the table. So they've actually been doing good this year. They haven't lost in the last five games. They've drawn two and won three. How are you feeling going up there? Not good. Not good at all. Are you shocked at where they are in the league? I am a little bit. Yeah, I am shocked because I think, I, like when we did the league prediction, I pushed for them to be in a relegation battle. Bottom. I think I might have even had them in the relegation Yeah, zone. I think I had them a bit higher than you and you convinced me to put them somewhere lower. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I have been surprised. I think, yeah, I would not have had them up there, but fair play to them. Um, yeah, fair play. It's kind of the reverse of last year because we were flying. Um, We were absolutely flying and then they just beat us out of nowhere. Or maybe we'll um, do the same then. Maybe we'll do the same, but I have no confidence at the moment <laughs> with the way that we've been playing. And we're just seeing the same after the break. And then if you add in, like you said, like fitness and COVID issues, I just, I'm not confident at all. The okay. way that we're defending, nothing's going to change this weekend dramatically. What uh, formation are we going to play? Uh, I, I think it, our formation has got to be with the wing backs, hasn't it? Cause that's, that's when we've played the best this season. Well, if he's changed his mind in the last four weeks and trained a new one, because he didn't have really a pre-season, got, did he? But we haven't got the players, nor is he signing the players to play like 4-3-3, three, three, um, unless he goes two up front with like Perot behind or Bafemi. But I heard he was offering Routledge and Dyer a new contract. <laughs> I'm I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if we need to call on him again. Um, yeah, I 
I think it's got to be the back five, really. Um, I can't see him changing it too much because we haven't got any wingers. And now, like, Cullen has gone as well and Whitaker. Unless unless you play Kyle Joseph on the wing, unless that's the plan, and Oberfemi wide, unless that's a bit of a plan going forward. Doesn't fill me with confidence, I'll be honest. But, no, I, um, I know. Okay, I know. so what's, what's your lineup then? What changes? Who's coming in? Uh, I think I think Fisher will start in goals. I think he goes straight in. Really? I think well, Russell Martin... Would, I, I, I think Russell Martin's going to put him straight in. That's why he signed him. Um, it's going to have to be Christie on as a wing back and probably Manning and then it's going to have to be Norton, Bennett and Cabango maybe as the back Is three. Cabango fit? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not if sure. If he's not. If not, maybe Brandon Cooper. Do you or Cooper Williams? Or Williams? I don't know. Difficult maybe if they reach well Manning play together again. Well, if that if 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 fully fit, it's got to be Manning and Bidwell and Norton and Bennett. Surely it's got to be that if everyone's fit. Well, that's what you'd think. But and then I'd have obviously politics. want to see Downs and Grimes back together in the middle. Um, and then I think it will be. I think it would be Patterson and not Patterson. Sorry, it'll be if he's in. If he's out. If he's a doubt, it'll be yeah, I don't think he's and Charm. And Cham and Corey Smith probably, and Pro up front. Oh, and Cham and Corey Smith. That's uh, we haven't seen that one. I think that's what he likes to do away from home. What if play he plays? Corey Smith. Yeah, but what if he does? Peru and Cham and Oberfemi. I would love to see that. We said this. Corey Smith like... played 120. Oh, he, well, no, he didn't play 120 minutes. Played like 110 minutes, didn't he? I would absolutely love to see and Cham, Oberfemi, and Peru as a like. As just a move in three up there. I would I love guess, to see yeah. that. But I, I don't think he will do it away from home against Huddersfield. But I'd love to see it. If he does, I might be chuffed with that. I then I'd be confident. Uh, remember when Grimes used to be in a 10 for Northampton and he used to score quite regular and as his score regular. Yeah. Maybe we could have done that to accommodate all these midfielders that are just sitting around. Yeah. It's good though on the Huddersfield game though. It's like it was a they changed it to a fiver, didn't they, for a ticket? Did they? Yeah, so I think it's going to be a good following. No, I I couldn't. Well, I wanted to go up, and then I like I said, I was ill over Christmas, and then I had COVID in the New Year, so I didn't get. I I was planning to go, but I didn't get a ticket then. Um, yeah, I won't be going. I'm isolating in my house ahead of the wedding. So yeah. But uh, sure I think there'll be a get COVID before the wedding. I think there'll be a massive following going up, which is good because we am obviously we haven't been able to go to any games. Yeah, everyone's going to be bouncing. Forest game, so, yeah, yeah. be class. So it might be a factor as well. Well, let's see, let's see. So, what's your prediction for this game then? Do you think we're going to end this rut of four straight defeats? I can't, I can't see it at the moment. There's nothing there that tells me that anything's going to improve. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. Draw. No, no I, the way we can see goals at the moment and Huddersfield are playing well, I can only see us losing that game. But again, I hope I'm wrong. And he plays Oberfermi and Cham and Perot and we just carve up and win 3 0. But I'm going to say it's going to be like 3 1 Huddersfield. 3 1 Huddersfield. I'm going um, 2 all. Nice. I'll take it. Take a point away so, from home. We'll see what happens. Um, I think that concludes there. Anything else you want to mention before we finish? No, that's it for me. Good to be back. <laughs> yeah, hope everyone has a very good start to 2022. Let's hope that this year goes in a better direction, maybe than the last, and things get a little bit better well, in the world. Let's hope that we can go to games soon. Yeah, get back. But to I don't normal. think that, I don't think that's far away now. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll be back in the stadium before long. Uh, but on that note, thanks for everyone that's watched and listened. Don't forget to subscribe or follow. Uh, if you liked our stuff to make sure you keep up to date with all of our videos and content and leave a like as well if you enjoyed it really helps us grow as a channel and we really appreciate it so smash that like button for us and hit that subscribe button and let us know in the comments as well if you agreed with what we've said and what you think about all of the transfer activity all the incomings and outgoings was it the right decision to send Whitaker and Cullen on loan recall Kyle Joseph like who do we need to build a squad to strengthen to sort of start moving back up the table like what is the direction we need to go in let us know in the comments and we shall see you in the next video so thanks for watching see you later see you soon